thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and this is Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> Diane and Roger, welcome back. You were on the show last time. We gave everyone two chances to reach the Pointless final, and today is your last chance. Uh, remind us how you two know each other. Well, Roger and I met when my partner took me to introduce me at his sports and social club. And you, and you play tennis together? We play tennis together, sometimes together, sometimes against each other because we play doubles. And we do cryptic crosswords together. Well, I can tell you this is all ideal training for Pointless. Best of luck this afternoon. And welcome Tanya and Kate. Uh, where do you two come from? We come from Richmond in North Yorkshire. Excellent. And how do you two know each other? Uh, well, we met at a barbecue that uh, Kate was holding at her house for a mutual friend. Um, we got chatting there and she was that useless that I had to take over the barbecue, even though I didn't know her. <laughs> they left me sat out in the rain on my own with a big golf umbrella <laughs> and just watched me cook the food and they all sat and they ate it all before I even got inside. <laughs> so, great first impression. Fantastic. <laughs> well, best of luck this afternoon. Uh, Trevor and Alan, welcome back. You were on the show last time. Today is your last chance to reach the final. Uh, remind us how you two know each other. Um, well, we both worked for Royal Mail, and in uh, the old days, there used to be inter-regional competitions between um, departments, and we were on opposite sides in the general knowledge quiz, but we had a drink afterwards together and got friendly, and um, Alan invited me to this quiz. Excellent. And finally, we've got Krista and Anthony. You were also on the show last time. Remind us how you two know each other. Um, we met in a club in Wolverhampton when t um, Anthony tried to chat me up. Uh, without success. Without success, but we stayed friends. But you stayed friends. Mm. Oh, tantalising. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will get to know more about you all throughout the show. Before we go any further, it's only right that I introduce my pointless friend, the man with all the facts and figures, Richard. Have you, have you got sort of some sort of show for us this afternoon? Yeah, we've got a great show for you today. A, a load of uh, very different questions and three returning pairs here as well, which is quite rare. Uh, I think uh, Roger and Diane, they were in the head-to-head -head last time, so uh, they have got to uh, be favourites, I think. Um, will Tanya and Kate uh, be able to take them on? I suspect it's between those two pairs, that's my guess. I'm not sure if Anthony's going to score any more usefully than he did the, the first time he met Krista. You never know, you never know. We've asked all our questions on Pointless to 100 people before the show. To stay in the game, our players need to score as few points as they can. And they do that by coming up with those obscure answers that as few of those 100 people gave as possible. The thing everyone's looking to do is find a pointless answer that none of our 100 people gave. And each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, nobody won the jackpot last time, so we had another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £2,250. <laughs> OK, let's play Pointless. In the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated and you have to be careful because if anyone gives me an incorrect answer, then this will happen. Oh. Yeah, that. And you will score the maximum of 100 points, so do be careful. OK, guys, our first category is... Film. OK, can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And okay. once you've decided, can the first players please step up to the podium? OK, let's find out what our first question is going to be. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Dustin Hoffman films as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any feature films made for cinema release for which Dustin Hoffman receives an acting credit. Uh, as always, uh, we're not looking for short films or documentaries or TV films or, or films where he played himself. Uh, but voice performances do count. There are 45 films on this list, and there are many, many pointless answers. OK, thanks, Richard. Right, Dine and Roger, you all drew lots before the show, and today it turns out you're going to go first. Roger, you're a film buff, are you? I can remember a few Dustin Hoffman ones. So Good. Uh, Let's and be I... having one. OK. <laughs> um, I'm going to go for Little Big Man. Little Big Man. So you're hoping to score as few points as possible. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Little Big Man. Down it goes, a good answer. Still going down, two. 
that for a moment. You thought that was going all the way there, didn't you, Roger? Well, that's a very good answer. Very strong. Only two people remembered Little Big Man. That scores you two. Little Big Man, Richard. Yeah, Little Big Man, 1970 Western, stars alongside Faye Dunaway. Very good answer. Splendid. OK, Tanya. Tanya, film? Is that an area you're comfortable with? Certain films. Certain... Not just in Hoffman films, necessarily. Just not just in Hoffman films. <laughs> what's, your, what's your particular area of expertise? I'd say geography. Geography. Dustin Hoffman films? I only know of a few, and obviously I'm not going to try and pick the most obvious one, but I think I'm going to have to go for Rain Man. OK, you are hoping to score as few points as possible, and you're hoping Rain Man will do it for you. We're looking for Dustin Hoffman films. I have an inkling that might be one. <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said Rain Man. Oh. Yeah, I had a hunch it might be that. OK, well, Rain Man scores you 68, Tanya. Rain Man. Yeah, everyone had a photographic memory when it came to Rain Man, 68 points, because <laughs> uh, he won the Best Actor Oscar for it for playing Raymond Babbitt. OK, Trevor, mm -hmm. do you like to kick back and watch Dustin Hoffman films? I have seen a few, yes, mm. in my time. And the one I'm going to go for is the one about... He's in charge of a virus called Outbreak. Outbreak. Let's see what that scored you. Will you beat Tanya? Will you beat Roger? Oh, nearly! <laughs> Outbreak, an excellent answer, Trevor, and that scores you four. So, Outbreak, Richard? Yeah, uh, absolutely, from, uh, from 1995, it deals with a deadly airborne virus. It sort of plays an action hero. OK. Anthony. Yeah, um... Anthony, we are looking for Dustin Hoffman films. Well, fortunately, being rejected by lots of women, I get to spend lots of time watching films, so... On your own? <laughs> on my own. <laughs> are they all as good friends with you, I hope, as, uh, as Christians? <laughs> few are. Uh, I'm going to go for Sphere. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sphere. It's right. Not bad. Really not bad. Look at that. Good answer, Anthony. Sphere, that scores you too. Sphere, Richard. Yes, yeah, some very, very good answers uh, this round. Uh, and Rain Man, of course. Uh, <laughs> Sphere was from 1998. It's uh, an adaptation of uh, a Michael Crichton novel. Excellent. Excellent answer. OK, we are halfway through the round, so let's have a look at the scoreboard. Well, very, very tight grouping at the right end. And I'm afraid Tanya and Kate are way out ahead at the wrong end of the scores, <laughs> I'm afraid. Uh, yes, Diane and Roger, Krista and Anthony, lovely on two there. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> Krista, we are looking for Dustin Hoffman films. How about that? Didn't Anthony do well? He did. I'm very proud of him. <laughs> very proud. You now have to do just as well. Well, fingers crossed. Fingers um... crossed. Well, the highest scorers, and just to remind you, are mm -hmm. Tanya and Kate on 68. If you can score 65 or less with this answer, you're through to the next round. OK. Um, this is one of my favourite films when I was a kid, and it's Hook. Hook. You want to be scoring 65 or less. There's the red line. Below that red line, and you are straight through to the next round. Let's see what that scored you. It's good enough. Look at that. Surprisingly, though, look at that, three! <laughs> Fabulous. Hook scores you three, taking your total up to five. Hook. Yeah, Hook. Dustin, of course, plays Captain Hook with Robin Williams as Peter Pan. OK, Alan, what are your hobbies? Um, well, I like quizzes, a bit of football, foreign travel. I'm not hearing film in there, Alan. No, but no. I'm hoping, as a child of the 70s, I've got it right, he was a played a character called Ratso Rizzo with John Voight in a film called Midnight Cowboy. Midnight Cowboy. So Tanya and Kate are on 68. You want to be scoring 63 or less with this. There's your red line. Below that, you're through to the next round. Let's see how many people said that. Well, it's correct. Oh, it's good enough. Very good answer. Good. Scores you nine, takes your total up to 13. Richard, Midnight Cowboy. Yeah, he, he did indeed play Ratso Rizzo in this 1969 film, Midnight Cowboy, and was nominated for Best Actor. Excellent, good answer. Oh, Kate and Tanya. Kate, 
You've got to do heroically here to avoid adding to that massive score. No pressure. Do you know any Dustin Hoffman films? Yeah, and they said most of them. That's, that's <laughs> good. Any you're yeah. left with that haven't There's been There's one, and I really, really hope I say this right. Meet the fuckers. OK, that's what you're saying. You want to score as low as you can. You are the high scorers. So obviously no red line for you. Let's see how many of our 100 people said meet the fuckers. That gives you a score of 76. Richard, Meet the Fockers. Meet the Fockers, as you rightly say, it's a sequel to Meet the Parents. Excellent. Diane, Kate and Tanya have now taken their total up to 76. They're the high scorers. You have to score 73 or less with this answer. Does that help you at all? No, because I can only think of two other films and one of them will definitely take us to a very high score. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to go with my backup, which I think is still quite popular. It's an old one and it's called Marathon Man. Marathon Man. There's your red line. Below that red line, you are through to the next round. Above that red line, Kate and Tanya are through to the next round. And we say goodbye to you. OK, Marathon Man. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Marathon Man. It's good enough. Lovely low score. Look wow. at that. So that scores you eight. That takes your total up to ten. Marathon Man, Richard. Uh, yeah, from 1976. It's put a generation of people off going to the dentist. Marathon Man. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Uh, right, so that is the end of round one, and the losing pair with the highest score, I'm sorry to say, is Tanya and Kate. What were the subjects you'd love to have had in this, this round? You could have picked Brad Pitt films or anything like that. I know, we could have done. Ha <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't. Uh, Richard, <laughs> what answers should they have gone with? Yeah, there were, there were any number of pointless answers. Well done if you've got any of these at home. Let's take a look at a few. Uh, Accidental Hero was a, a pointless answer. I Heart Huckabee's another pointless answer. Billy Bathgate, all quite well-known films, but nobody mentioned them. Ishtar, one of the most expensive flops of all time. He was a voice, of course, in Kung Fu Panda, which I've seen, I think, 700 times on DVD, <laughs> thanks to my kids. Uh, Dick Tracy he was in. That was a pointless answer. The Tiger Mate's out. And I can't believe, Tanya, you didn't say, who is Harry Kellerman and why is he saying those terrible things about me? <laughs> well, I left that for Katie, so that would uh, be an easy one for yeah. her. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at um, the worst possible answers you could have given. Tanya may want to look away. Uh, in third, <laughs> it was Tootsie, would have scored you 36 points. Uh, in second, it was The Graduate, which would have scored you 38, but a million miles in the lead, I'm afraid. The worst answer you could have given, <laughs> Rain Man, 68. Thanks, Richard. OK, Tanya and Kate, I'm afraid you just didn't have the pointless knowledge you needed to make it through to the next round. But remember, everyone gets two chances to reach our pointless final, and we'll see you again next time for your final chance. Thanks so much for playing Pointless. Thank you. <laughs> of the remaining three pairs, it's time now for round two. <laughs> now, obviously, only two pairs make it through to the head-to-head, -head, so one of our teams is going to be going home disappointed. You just have to make sure it's not you. Now, our category for the second round is... Literature. Literature. Now, decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second. Once you've decided, could the first players please step up to the podium? OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Alice in Wonderland characters as they could. Alice in Wonderland characters, Richard. Yep, the correct answers here are all characters in Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and or Alice Through the Looking Glass. Right. OK, thanks, Richard. In round two, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers in each pass. Now, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, but you have to be very careful because there's also at least one incorrect answer among the seven. Pick one of those and, of course, you will score the maximum of 100 points, which you don't want to do. The first set of seven answers are... Humpty Dumpty, Mock Turtle, Tweedledee, Gully the Seagull, King of Hearts, Queen of Hearts, Cheshire Cat. Roger, I'd have to say, you're looking quietly confident. <laughs> pensive, I think. Pensive. Yes, pensive. You're looking quietly pensive. 
<laughs> okay, I think I can recognise uh, a few. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go for the mock turtle. The mock turtle. Okay, let's see how many of our 100 people said the mock turtle. It's good. It's very good. Oh, very good indeed. Look at that, Roger. Well, that's a pointless answer, and that adds £250 to today's jackpot, taking it up to £2,500. Brilliant. Well done. And that gives you a score of nothing. Richard, Mock Turtle. It's a very sad character, constantly sobbing. He's a bit like Anthony after a night out. <laughs> Uh, now, remember, there could be more pointless answers in there. There is definitely at least one incorrect answer hiding in there, so be very, very careful. OK, Trevor. Yes. You've now got only six to play with. Mm -hmm. Well, Roger's pinched my answer, but yeah. fortunately I um, do know Alice in Wonderland a bit, and I'm going to go for the Cheshire Cat, cos all that was left was his grin. You're going to go for the Cheshire Cat? Very good. As always, you want the most obscure answer. Let's see what that scored you. Oh, Ooh, dear. <laughs> Cheshire Cat, that scores you 55. Cheshire Cat, Richard. Yeah, very, very popular answer. Uh, yeah, you can uh, appear and disappear at will, sometimes leaving his grin behind. Mm. Right, Anthony. Right, I'm going to... Learn from my mistakes, and I'm just going to get an answer that I know is in there, so I'm going to go for Queen of Hearts. You're going to take the Queen of Hearts? Yeah. Let's see what that gets you. Ooh, 63. <laughs> a safe answer, but a dangerous one. It scored you 63. Richard? Yeah, 63 points. I'm afraid it's the, the worst answer you could have given, <laughs> uh, the violent, tyrannical Queen of Hearts. Uh, why don't we take a look through the rest of the answer, see, see what perhaps you could have said. The Queen of Hearts' long-suffering husband, of course, the King of Hearts. Not, don't think I'm uh, giving away any secrets to tell you they're married. <laughs> would have scored you ten points. Tweedledee, twin brother of Tweedledum, would have scored you 32. Humpty Dumpty is also a correct answer, but would have scored you two. Mm. And the incorrect answer there is the, the mascot of Brighton and Hove Albion, <laughs> Gully the Seagull, <laughs> would have scored you 100 points. Well, well done, everyone, for, for avoiding Gully the Seagull. Um, anyway, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scoreboard. Diane and Roger. Ooh, looking very strong there with a score of nothing. Very well said, Roger. Great answer there. Uh, Trevor and Alan, Krista and Anthony, quite close up there at the top of the board. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put seven more answers up on the board. We are looking for... Alice in Wonderland characters, and here is your selection. White Queen, Black Knight, Dormouse, White Knight, March Hare, Dodo, White Rabbit. A lot of whites in there. Um, again, I can tell you also in there, there is at least one pointless answer and, of course, at least one incorrect answer. So think very carefully. Krista, do you know the, the, the books? I studied it at university last year, so if I get the wrong answer, I'm really going to kick myself. You're um, going to have to get a point, for this, <laughs> surely. I'll kick you as well. I'm going to go for the dodo. You're going to go for the dodo. <laughs> you say that with great confidence. You want to score as little as you can to try and atone for Anthony's high score. You are the high scorers at the moment, so no red line for you. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the dodo. Good. Very good. Right. Thank you. Good answer. Dodo scores you one, taking your total up to 64. Richard, the Dodo. Yeah, clearly, clearly somebody else studied it at university as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Dodo. It's one of the creatures that falls into uh, Alice's pool of tears. Oh. As Krista will probably be able to tell us. <laughs> OK, very good. Well, thanks very much. Good answer. Very good answer. 64. Is that going to be enough to save your bacon? I wonder. Maybe Alan can let us know. Alan. I'm struggling, so I think we need to get a really good score. So... If you don't, then you will be joining the dodo. Yeah. Um, the Black Knight. OK, you're on 55. Krista and Anthony are the high scorers on 64. You want to be scoring eight or less. To be sure of staying in the game, there's your red line. Come below that and you're through. Wow, it's low. 
OK, the Black Knight is what you're saying. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the Black Knight. Oh, no! Whoa, that's very bad news, I'm afraid. That's an incorrect answer, which scores you the maximum of 100 points. Great news for Krista and Anthony, though. The Black Knight, Richard. That's, yeah. what, that's what you get for not studying Alice in Wonderland at university, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, yeah, The Black Knight has been in all sorts of stories and films, perhaps notably uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, uh, but uh, not in any of the Alice stories, I'm afraid. OK, well, Alan and Trevor, I'm afraid you are definitely going to be leaving mm. us at the end of this round. Um, but, Diane, what fun. This is lovely for you. You have complete licence. You, uh, you have to find the pointless answer now. You, you, you can say anything you like. Even if you score the maximum of 100, you are definitely safe. So, um... I'm going for one that I'm absolutely sure of. Because I'm but honestly why? not... <laughs> <laughs> That's my strategy. You could, you could add £250 to the jackpot. Roger's and done And I can't it. lose. You're saying I could add £250 and I can't lose. Mm -hmm. You could be right. No, no, could be. Right. No, please <laughs> All right. I've, I've All seldom right. been writer. <laughs> what are you going to go for? The White Queen. The White Queen. Yep. Let's see how many people said that. Where's right? Sorry. Oh, well done, though. Okay. You see? A leap of faith you took there. Uh, sadly, it wasn't pointless, but, well, doesn't that feel good? Yes, it does. I have to admit ah, it does. That feels good. Well done. That scored you five. That takes your total up to five. Richard, the White That's Queen. That's a very freeing thing to do, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think we've, we've... Let's, uh, let's have a little look at all the answers. Uh, Black Knight was actually the only incorrect answer up there. Uh, but there is one pointless one. Let's go through the ones that weren't pointless. Uh, White Rabbit wasn't pointless. That would have got you... 69 points. The March Hare was not pointless. That would have got you nine points. The Dormouse, of course, was not pointless. So everybody at home who said White Knight, congratulations. That's the pointless answer. Would have added £250 to the, to the jackpot. OK, thanks, Richard. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, is Trevor and Alan. Bad luck, bad luck. We didn't, have, we didn't have any of your subjects, did we? No. It just no. didn't happen. Nope. And I, I happen to know that the next round is postcodes, which is just oh, so unfair. Oh, oh, how, oh, like... how unfortunate is that? So, Trevor and Alan, I'm afraid you just didn't have that pointless literature knowledge you needed to get through to the next round, so we have to say goodbye. But you've been fantastic contestants. Thanks very much for playing. Thank you. Thank you. But for the remaining two pairs, things are about to hot up even more as we enter the head-to-head. -head. Well done, Diane, Roger, Krista and Anthony. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £2,500. <laughs> mm. So you're going head-to-head -head on up to five questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, and you are now allowed to confer. That's the important thing. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question, all right? And the first pair to win three will be playing for today's jackpot. Right, let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many circles of latitude as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any of the five major latitudes of the Earth. Those are the imaginary named lines which go around the globe. Mm. OK, Diane and Roger, because you played the best throughout the show, you get to go first. All right, you answer. All right, OK. We're going to go for the Arctic Circle. You're going to go for the Arctic Circle. Krista and Anthony. So, okay. <laughs> I've got a clue. I don't know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, that's a lot of pressure. Um, go for the Tropic of Capricorn. Yeah, go for that. Right. Sort of Do you approve of that one, Anthony? Sort of that... thinking. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Capricorn. OK, so we have got Arctic Circle from Diane and Roger. We've got Tropic of... Capricorn from Krista and Anthony. OK, well, let's put them to the test in the order they were given to us. Diane and Roger in gold have said the Arctic Circle. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Well, it's correct. Oh, that's good. 19. 19, Roger. You feeling nervous now, Krista and Anthony? A little. Think uh, Capricorn is, <laughs> comes in above or below that? What would you reckon? Probably above. 
Well, only one way to find out. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the Tropic of Capricorn. I'm afraid, yes, it came in above, which means after one question, it is 1-0 to Diane and Roger. Richard? Yeah, well, Arctic Circle was a very good answer, but Krista and Anthony, you could have stolen that point simply by saying Antarctic Circle, which would have been the best answer of all. Let's take a look at all five. Best answer, Antarctic Circle, then the Arctic Circle, then the, uh, the Tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, and the worst answer of all, uh, Equator. Well done if you've got all five, especially well done if you've got Antarctic Circle. Um, right, OK, next question. This time, Krista and Anthony, it's going to be your turn to go first. It is 1-0 currently to Diane and Roger. OK, we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many monopoly spaces you cannot buy. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any space on an original standard London Monopoly board that your piece can land on, but that you cannot buy. There are nine such squares on the board. OK, Chris and Anthony, it's your turn to go first. Yeah, we're going to go for free parking. OK, one of the squares you can't buy on the Monopoly board. Free parking, you say. Diane and Roger. Go. I'll go to Diane. Yeah. We're going to go for go. OK, we are going to go for go. <laughs> so we have Krista and Anthony saying free parking. Let's see what that gets you. Oh, oh. not bad, not bad. <laughs> 22 said free parking. Um, Diane and Roger have gone for go. Let's see how many of our 100 people said go. Ah! Oh. Clear 30 points between them. Um, so, after our second question, it is one all. Richard. OK, uh, let's take a look at all nine of them. I'm sure some people at home will have, uh, will have got all of them. Uh, just visiting, the best thing you could have said would have scored you four points, then super tax and income tax, free parking, of course, we heard from Krista and Anthony. Uh, go to jail would have scored you 47 points. Let's take a look at the other four. Complete the set. Community chest. Go, of course, we just heard. Uh, chance would have scored you 55, and jail was the worst answer of all, with 69. OK. Let's see if we can break this deadlock. Here's your third question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Rolf Harris top 40 singles as they could. Richard. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Richard. Uh, <laughs> we're looking for uh, any single released by Rolf Harris as a solo single that's entered the UK top 40. Uh, he's had six top 40 singles, which is six more than me. <laughs> OK, Rolf Harris singles. Diane and Roger, you're to go first. You don't have to perform them. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. OK. Yeah, we're going to go for a bit of an oldie, a bit of goodie. Jake the Pig. OK. Krista and Anthony. I think we're a little bit young for some of these, but um, there's one that I do know. It's called Two Little Boys. Yes, I've heard of that one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with Diane and Roger first. Jake the Pig. How many people said that? Ah! Oh, dear, oh, dear. That is an incorrect answer. So let's see. Krista and Anthony, you've said two little boys. This just has to be a correct answer. That's all that matters. What it scores is academic. Yep, that's good enough. 63, a high score. <laughs> but it wins you the point. So after our third question, it's 2-1 to Krista and Anthony. 2-1, very exciting. Richard. Yeah, that's very unlucky. Jake the Peg, very well known, but not a top 40 hit. So who knew Rolf Harris had six top 40 singles, none of which were Jake the Peg? Uh, <laughs> let's take a look at all six of them. Mm -hmm. Sing along if you know the words. Uh, his most recent hit was a, a cover version of Fine Day. Uh, that was in 2000. Bluer Than Blue was his third hit. Sunrise would have, would have won the points for you. Uh, he did a cover version of Stairway to Heaven, uh, which was uh, it's better than the original, in my opinion. <laughs> really quite something. Uh, that would have won the points as well. Timey Kangaroo Downsport, his first hit, that would have won the points. But uh, as it is, two little boys, it's the worst answer of all, but it wins the points. Well done. OK. I just have to point out to Diane and Roger that Krista and Anthony are 2-1 up. They only have to win one more point. And they are through to our jackpot final. OK. 
Bear that in mind while you mull over this fourth question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Nobel Prizes as they could. We're looking for any of the five original Nobel Prizes uh, awarded each year for achievements in various fields. The Economics Prize was established more than 50 years later, so it's not one of the original five, so we won't accept it here. OK. Um, right, Krista and Anthony, it's your turn to go first. What's it going to be from you? Um, being an English student, I'm going to go for the Nobel Prize for Literature. Very good. Diane and Roger, this is your chance to stay in the game. Tough one, but mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go for chemistry. OK. Krista and Anthony have said literature. Let's see what that scored you. Thirty-five. <laughs> Thirty-five. Well, you've won it with higher scores than that. Diane and Roger, you've said chemistry. Let's see if it is a correct answer. And if it is a correct answer, let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Chemistry. This to keep you in the game. It's right. And it's good. Look at that, only 12 points. Thank you. Only 12 people said chemistry. So that means, very excitingly, after our fourth question, we are absolutely evenly matched. Two all. Uh, yeah, well done, Roger. The best answer you could have given uh, was physics. Well done if you got that at home. Then medicine, then chemistry. Nobel Prize for Literature has been won by everyone from Rudyard Kipling to Harold Pinter. And then, of course, the, the top answer of all was the Peace Prize, which uh, last year went to Barack Obama. Right, OK, we come to our fifth and final question, the decider. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many... Friends actors as they could. Diane looks away in disgust. <laughs> yeah, we're simply looking for the names of any of the six actors who uh, play the friends in the sitcom of that name. Right, so, Diane and Roger, it's your turn to go first. I'm letting Roger answer because I only know two. OK, <laughs> nominate Roger. Not that I know any more. Um, we're going to go for Matt LeBlanc. OK, Krista and Anthony. I've got an answer. <laughs> and, that, 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 Rich, he's got an answer. Anthony's got an answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's, got, he's got an answer. What are we going to do about that? I, um, well, I, I guess we'll have to hear it. I guess so. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go for Lisa Kudrow. Lisa Kudrow. OK, Diane and Roger said Matt LeBlanc. Let us see how Matt LeBlanc fared when put to the 100. Ah, oh, 18. Good answer. <laughs> That's a good low score. I was, expe I was expecting more of Matt LeBlanc, frankly. Yeah. I hope his agent's not watching. <laughs> um, but we have Lisa Kudrow from Krista and Anthony. This to decide who goes through to the final and has a crack at that 2,500 quid jackpot. Lisa Kudrow. <laughs> it's good. Is it good enough? At that, <laughs> 18 to 18. 18 plays 18. It's a draw. OK, as it's a tie, we will give you another question, and whoever scores the lowest in that will go through to today's jackpot final, OK? But first, we'll go to Richard for the Friends update. <laughs> well, uh, it couldn't be closer, but if either of you had said Matthew Perry you'd now be in the final. Matthew Perry was the best answer you could have given. Let's take a look at all six. Uh, Matthew Perry down the bottom there, then uh, LeBlanc and Lisa Kudrow we know about. David Schwimmer and uh, Courtney Cox and Miles out in front, which is what you get for going out with Brad Pitt. One of the many things you get for going out with Brad Pitt is Jennifer <laughs> Aniston. OK, so here is our tiebreaker question that will decide who goes through to our final. We gave... 100 people, 100 seconds, to name as many words 
of the abbreviation GCSE as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any of the four words that uh, make up the full title of the UK qualification GCSE. OK, and as they are our golden couple, Diane and Roger, answer first. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. we're going for the S, for secondary. OK, Krista and Anthony. We were going to go for secondary. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, OK, we're going to go for the C, which is certificate. OK. Diane and Roger said secondary. There they are in gold. Let's see how many of our 100 people said secondary. This to decide who goes through to our final and has a crack at that £2,500. <laughs> 71 for secondary. OK. Let's see how many of our 100 people said certificate. This to get through to our final and have a crack at that jackpot. Oh. Ah, 79. <laughs> so there we have it, our decider. Diane and Roger win that 3-2. Richard. Yes, it's the, it's the, let's have a look at uh, how all four words scored. It is, of course, the General Certificate of Secondary Education. Secondary was the best answer. You did the best you could with certificate. Uh, general and then uh, education, 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 right at the top there. <laughs> OK, well, thanks, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of our head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid, is Krista and Anthony. Oh, bad luck. Were you nearly going to say Matthew Perry in the Friends round? Yeah, we, we said Matthew Perry or Lisa Kudrow, and we went for Lisa Kudrow because we thought she'd be. Yeah, I'd have thought that low. as well. Matthew Perry, very, very popular. I thought Matt LeBlanc could have been up there, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, things would have been very different if you'd, if you'd said Matthew Perry. See, if you'd listened to Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if Krista had only listened to Anthony. Are you pleased with how far you've got, though? Yeah, yeah. I'm really pleased. Yeah, you've done very well. You've come Thank all the way you. through to the head to head. You just didn't have that pointless knowledge you needed to get through to our final, I'm afraid. Um, but you have done very well. You've been fantastic contestants. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. <laughs> But for Diane and Roger, it's time for our pointless final. So congratulations, Diane and Roger. You've fought off all the competition. You've done what was important. You've won our coveted pointless trophy. And now you get a chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at an impressive £2,500. Look at that. Now, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that no-one else could think of. We've had one pointless answer on the show today. Roger, you gave us that answer. You just need to find another one now. OK? Right, first you choose a category from these three options, and your choices are... Goal scorers, 90s boy bands, thriller novelists. It's definitely not boy bands. Definitely, definitely not boy bands, isn't it? Goal no. scorers, yeah. I don't Thriller novelists. Thriller novelists. We it? have a chance. OK. So what are you going to go for? We're going to go for thriller novelists. Thriller novelists. So we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Frederick Forsyth novels mm -hmm. as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any novels for which Frederick Forsyth was uh, credited as author on the book's cover. Uh, no anthologies, short stories, collections, non-fiction, anything like that. Just the 13 novels. OK, right. You now have up to a minute to come up with three answers. And all you need to win that £2,500 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. There's the jacket. Fourth Protocol. Yes. Um, the Afghan. The Afghan. I think that's a recent one. OK. Is one called the icon? Uh, could be, yeah. The icon, I Are think, sounds, sure? well, sounds familiar. I'm not sure it's by Frederick Forsyth. Yeah, okay. Ah, well, don't um, say. We'll Fourth Protocol, definitely. Um, That'd be a safe one. I'm sure uh, he's had a recent one called the Afghan. Well, that could be a good one to go for. I think. That could yeah. be a good one to go yeah. for. Can we think of the third? There, the jacket is a bit yeah, obvious, isn't it? Yeah, I know, but um, one of them's got to be pointless. 30 the seconds. Would well, you want to take a risk with the icon? If we go with the safe one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you fancy going through those? Yeah. I've just got a feeling it's one of his. I don't think yeah. I'm mixing that with Morris West. No. 
I, I, I okay. trust you with that. So, okay. uh, so we go for fourth pole, okay. Afghan. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. You've come up with three answers. Ten yes. seconds left on the clock, so we can stop the clock. Your three answers are the icon, the icon, the Afghan, the Afghan. Yes. And, and the fourth. The protocol. fourth protocol. Which of those do you have the most faith in? Probably the fourth protocol. So we'll put that one last. Okay. Uh, which one do you have the least faith the in? The icon. The icon. Mm. So in the order you said them, the icon, the Afghan, mm. and the fourth protocol. Let's put those up on the board. Icon, the Afghan, and the fourth protocol. There are your three answers. Okay, well, let's start with your first one, the one you have the least faith in. Icon. Obviously, it has to be a pointless answer. That means nobody can have said it for you to win. Let's see how many of our 100 people said icon. Well, it's correct. It's a correct answer. Down it goes. This for two and a half thousand pounds. Down it goes. Still going down. Oh! Blimey, and that's the one you had the least faith in. I couldn't be sure it was one of his, I must admit. Well, very good answer. One person out of a hundred. Who remember. is that person? OK, your first answer was not a pointless answer. By the skin of its teeth, I have to say. So, you only have two more chances to win this jackpot, 2,500 pounds. Does that make you more confident or less confident? Less. Very good, <laughs> very good. The Afghan is your second answer. We are looking for Frederick Forsyth novels. We have to hope nobody said this next answer, the Afghan. <sighs> let's see if it is a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said the Afghan. We're looking for pointless. Come on, come on. This for two and a half thousand pounds. Down it goes on the Afghan. Yes! <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, well done. Well done. Very good call. Brilliant. You've done it. Congratulations. You managed on your second answer to find that all important pointless answer, which means you go home with a jackpot of £2,500. Well done. Thank you. Very good. Wishing you'd gone for 90s boy bands? Probably not. <laughs> well, thanks once again to our winning players, Diane and Roger, who go away with today's jackpot of £2,500. <laughs> Join us next time when we put more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>